phones. This is a very, very simple, straightforward presentation. This, the entire Web3 crypto space came about in, in around, say, 2008, when there was a gentleman called Satoshi. Uh, he said that yeah, we need something different and something to decentralize the industry. That's when Bitcoin was formed. It was born, rather. And right now, if you go to see, you, you fast forward to now, you have many, many chains out there which are helping people you know, deploy their applications, do their transformations, have their transactions done in, in, in transferring assets across to different chains. There are quite a few players in the market. I'm not saying that they are competition. They're more like future clients to us. So you see the market size keeps increasing from time to time again. Now you had uh, different uh, platforms that came into existence to help facilitate these transactions. And now because the popularity of, of uh, platforms such as Ethereum rose to such an extent, the gas fees also went very high because there were people who were all working on, on Ethereum chains straight away. Now, when you have a look at different chains that came, like Solana came in, you know, Polkadot came in, Arwave came in, they all have different, different platforms that they work on, the different coding language that they work on as well. Now, when, when any developer, any of you want to deploy an application on, on any chain for that matter, <coughs> you have to relearn that language, you've got to redeploy it. Now, what we do over here is you can deploy it on our Dojima chain and we handle the handshake and everything, the smart contracts with all the pre-existing chains that are there. We mm -hmm. support approximately 14 chains as of now, right away? Yeah. 14 as of now and we're still growing depending on, on demand and request from our user base. If, if a user comes and says, okay, I want to you know, have Pepe coin on there, we're like, okay, fine, take the yeah. you know, let, let more people come and ask for it. And then we just might help you with that as well. Depends on, on how, you know, how much demand is there. Now, when you have a look at the wallet providers as well, we support a lot of wallets. So there is ERC20, SPL, BRC20, different, different protocols for wallets. You have EVM based chains, you have, you know, Polkadot as a software that goes on as well. Um, and if you have a look at the segment completely, it's pretty disorganized as of now. Now, the, the, uh, concept that we have over here is uh, why is blockchain in existence? <clears throat> so that there is irrefutable proof of certain things that have taken place. And you can go back and see what has happened, right? Now, back, if you, if you roll back to Web 2 and prior to Web 2, you had banks who would say that, okay, we need to talk to our different branches and we need to have our own reality, our own internet, so to speak. Different, different people had different, different internets going on. The US military started it, then the banking sector took over it. They had their own space. The military had their own space. They would only talk within their own little bubbles and their own little circles. And uh, nobody would interact with each other. So there is no confidential flow of information. Now, the Web3 space is evolving at such a fast paced rate today, where you cannot afford to have independent bubbles. You need an ocean. So everything flows together and comes together. That is what we aim to provide, where we have one platform where multiple realities can come together and talk to each other, transfer assets, transfer messages. So if you, for example, as a developer were to deploy an application on, on our chain and say, okay, I want people in the metaverse segment to have a look and you know, interact with it. And also I want people in, in another segment on a different chain altogether to be able to access it. So we can provide that functionality. It is pretty straightforward and simple. So you see basically what happens is if anything comes on the Dojima chain, it goes onto a Hervé's layer, which has all connected chains to it, which connect to Dojima back and forth. So phase one, connect all the chains to Dojima, connect all the chains inter interchain as well, so they can communicate. Phase three, what happens is you have a cross-chain user who comes on board. Now, there are there is, there is um, EVM-based chains, which is not that difficult to get them to talk to each other because they're the same language. The challenge comes when you have non-EVM chains which have different, different protocols of their own. You have your Solana interface contracts, you have your Ethereum, you have your, uh, there are quite a few others as well. There are about seven in total if I'm not wrong. Right over there? RV, Polkadot. Quite a bit of them, RV, Polkadot. So now to get RV to talk to Polkadot is a little challenging. Then you have them talk to other EVM chains as well which also is a challenge. So this is the challenge which we are solving, slowly and steadily. We're getting there. I don't need to say much about this. It's quite self-explanatory. You have your cross-chain app store, dap store as we call it. So this is something which is in the making as we speak right now. 
So if you deploy anything up there, it's there. And your dashboard will be able to pick and choose where you would like to deploy it. As a user, you have your, your, your account, you have the transactions that you're doing, and you have the pricing that is happening. The pricing will vary now. When you deploy an application on, on the Dojima chain, you wanted to talk to say, not all of them, because obviously Gatsby is coming to play. You wanted to talk to three different uh, chains, we can facilitate that. You wanted to talk to seven different chains, we can do that. You want to talk to all of them, we can do that as well. Depends on how popular your application is getting, you can slowly and steadily upscale and upbuild it. Fair? So we had a testnet launch, we had it in uh, Bombay, we had we've had a uh, lot of events that we've done across Delhi, Bombay, Jaipur, Goa, okay. first one in Hyderabad. Plan, we plan, plan to do plan to do a lot more as well. Thank you. We plan to do a lot more over here. Hyderabad is a very very interesting community, and I must say that uh, we've been to a lot of events. We've hosted a lot of events. We've co-hosted a lot of events. But when I walked in here, and we had HyperSign giving you a presentation. You guys are the most interactive audience that I've seen. I'm not just saying this here. Yeah? I don't say this often, but yeah. The questions that you were asking, you know, the, the, the interaction levels are pretty high. Even even Charan told me that before I walked in and had a coffee. He's like, this crowd is amazing. You should have a conversation with them. So anyway, we, as I said, we've had a lot of events. We've had hackathons. We've had uh, workshops. Blockathon. We've had blogathons. We've sponsored the entrepreneur event blogathon on our own as well. And uh, we, we've uh, been part of 17 different events in the Hong Kong Web3 uh, Summit as well, which happened about how many, last to last month? April. Two months back, yeah, April. So Bhagat and myself had gone down to Hong Kong and we participated in 17 different events over there. So you get an idea of, of what we do. If you have any questions, we are all yours, and he's the guy who's going to answer them. <laughs> Come this way, man. So Uday is the senior developer. Technical questions would be diverted at him. If you have any logic-based questions or any growth-based questions or anything on how you would like to interact with us as a company, I'm all here. Right. Yeah, as you said earlier, I think he said uh, uh, there's a lot of gas fees involved these days on building applications or things and so So how would your platform help me building my apps or this? Uh, build anything uh, in terms of business while saving the gas fees or starting on a customer, mm -hmm. uh, much less affordable. It depends on so many things. Uh, if you are developing on some certain chain, there will be minimum gas fee that you need to make use of. So yeah. we'll be picking that and we'll target. There is a certain uh, algorithm to calculate that, and based on that, we'll be displaying how much gas we need. So your chains will use only for the apps or uh, We are still developing so many things uh, right now. We are basically a layer one. Layer one. We are connecting all the chains in one platform. That's it. See, currently Solana looks like cheapest, cheaper, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. But I think it's uh, the EVM base. There's the next version coming by the end of this year, mm -hmm. which is aimed to make it lighter and less expensive. Mm -hmm. You see that it's, it's, it's going to be like as convenient as Solana, or is it better to stick with Solana? If price is a concern. Uh, it depends on various factors. <laughs> we can't say. No, so but I know. Are you saying you are going to be an ONDC for all the currencies or apps or anything? So, we need to all the tokens, all the. Why don't you open up the website? Yeah. Why don't you open up the website? See, we can't support all the chains because there might be some. As you said, Pepe. Yeah. <laughs> there will be some low things. Exactly. So, it's all demand and supply. Like at yeah. first, right now, we are planning to make use of main chains like Polkadot, Solana, Argo. Those are basic chains which are in the community. So, first, we'll try to pack all the main basic chains. And then, after that, Whatever chains are interlinked with them. <laughs> so, anyway, we, we've had a lot of interest through all our blockathons and hackathons that we've, we've hosted. We've had a lot of interest from people who have competed and won grants from us and who've, who've won you know, prize money as well. And what has happened is we've gone ahead and helped them out with not only deploying their application but also fine tuning their concept. If they're um, willing to develop yes. their product. 
will be collaborating with them and move so forward if they are interested to build their own. We give them a lot of support, not only with the, with the grants. Grants anybody can give you. Like somebody will give you like five thousand, ten thousand dollars, and that's about it. Yeah, what you do with it is up to you. Buy a new car, or you you put it in the business. It's completely your call. But what we do is we go one step further. We help the people with, with the nuances of the product that they are trying to develop. To fine tune it, to look on real world scenarios. If you might have a fantastic concept, say somebody in this room has got a concept about uh, ticketing platforms. Just giving an example. I don't know. Somebody might have had it. I walked in some time back. I'm not saying that it was any of you, but yeah. Disclaimer. So, in case somebody has a fantastic idea about ticketing platforms. Uh, how to make that in the Web3 space, how to make it more competent, how to make it more efficient, how to make it irrefutable. In that scenario, we come on board, we help you out with real world scenarios. We try to get certain experts from the existing industry who will be able to mentor and guide us and you simultaneously where we can understand what your product is capable of and you can build it to better heights and deploy it on our chain. How that helps us is that we have somebody who is working on our platform. One. Secondly, how it helps you is that you have a platform available to you which can go across on multi chains with different different uh, wallets as well. People from different different wallets, whoever have got whichever currency, whichever wallet is stored on, can utilize your application to make the most of it. So it's a symbiotic scenario in that in that regard. I hope that kind of clears it. Yeah. So what happens is when you come, like you've registered for the hackathon, right? So we will also be on, on the panel of judges. We will be closely monitoring who is doing what, you know, what kind of uh, code that you've put in there. Or our guys, including over here, will be going through it line by line. We'll be looking at it, we'll be understanding it. If need be, we might be reaching out to you as well. That, okay, this is something that you have. What's it all about? You know, let's, let's, let's discuss it. Let's have a conversation about it. We form a group, we take it further. So these are things that we are very interested in doing. It's, it's not something fantastic out of the box. It's just basic support, man. That's what we do. Anyway, yeah, any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious to know the way you named your company, like uh, Dogma, uh, Rojima <laughs> Wallet, right? Yeah. One is if there's any background for Rojima, but more than that, Wallet, right? If you are going cross chain, yeah. see, uh, across chain, you can also have an application beyond currency, right? Like Solana can be used as a protocol for some, some other application to be developed. So, will this platform be also useful beyond that inter-currency yes. thing? Oh, yes. So, Dapp Store, Wallet, a lot of that? It's being yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's then, why do, you, why do you label it as a ballot? Or is it this page? No, this, okay. this is just one page. Ah, this only is, one page. This is okay. one page right. of the whole site. Ah. This is not the site itself. Okay. This is there, you have everything there. Over the home page, no? Yeah. yeah so, have a look. You've got your, your products, your blog explorer, you've got all the resources, all the docs that you can think of. Everything that you want, everything is there. Scroll all the way down, please. All of it is here. You have secure security, you have resources, you have the community that you can join as well. Further down, you can go also, right? All the way down. Over here, if you see, you've got your blog explorer, you've got all our policies, the roadmap, different, different shit. All our social channels are here. Everything is announced on a regular basis from Telegram. You have a medium channel as well. This discussion that's happening here, when we put up there, we have a YouTube channel as well, which will all be going up there. So it's all there. And there is a lot of scope of growth. So if you have a suggestion, we are all yours again. Great. And you're also helping the web to applications to be transformed? Well, there are certain people that come to us who are in the web to space say that I want a portion of my uh, business. Like, for example, in, in, in the Entrepreneur Web3 Summit at the Hilton, we had one gentleman who came up to us and said that uh, I have a trading platform. And what we do is, Clients buy stocks and shares in the equity segment, not in the crypto segment, but they want to pay with USDT. So what happens is, in, in futures and options, it's very volatile. Now, by the time he transfers the USDT into fiat and pushes it over and gets it to him, the price has changed. And he is incurring certain losses, but because he wants to retain his clients, he is maintaining that scenario. Now, he wants to have a solution where he can induce Web3 into such a space to help Web2, like just a portion of it, so that this can help transfer the assets over across into real money so that the transactions can be completed on the Web2 space. 
So there's a discussion which is going on. There are many people that come to us with these kind of queries that how do we do this? Can you help us? And we go ahead and we put our thinking caps on and you know try to come out with solutions for them. So yes, to answer your question, we do have people who come up to us in the Web2 space asking for solutions of the Web3 type to be induced into their platforms as well. And we try to do that. Any live cases or you can just show well, there are, there are, there application is, in Hyderabad or okay. in Bangalore anywhere you know. So what I can say is there are certain aspects of confidentiality that we maintain with, with developers that come on board for the simple reason that uh, we don't want anyone else stealing their consent. And uh, considering the uh, the evolution of the Web3 space right now, I would say that if, if the Web3 space has gone from its gestation period into an infantile period all the way into an adolescent period where it's very, very boisterous, we all be in the business, isn't it? So it's at a phase where it can be very volatile as of now. So till it stabilizes, it's always nice to maintain a certain level of confidentiality. Even our own product, when we had pitched it to certain investors, somebody went and made a copy of it. So there is something that we keep on record back. Yeah? <laughs> there is something that we have to maintain a confidentiality for. So we can't give you live cases as of now, but there are plenty. You can check our medium uh, where we are very nicely omitted the name, but you get the entire concept of it. There's, there's a lot of information there that you can understand more. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your details. Glad to have you, know, have you at uh, this office, this space.